Hello, my name is Matthias, and welcome to the FPL Scope and the weekly walkout draft for Game Week 34. And as you can see, I am in a different place than I am, usually am in, because I am filming this at Kevin's place, my co-founder of the FPL Scope podcast. So I'm in London, and uh, I'm in, well, basically his apartment, and I didn't bring my camera, I didn't bring my lighting, I didn't bring anything, basically. He has a mic, he also has a camera, but I can't plug that into my uh, computer at the same time, because it's a different port, but... Whatever, you're not here to listen to me speak about technical stuff, and you're not here to see my face, basically, either. You're here to hear my uh, FPL advice, and that's what I'm going to give you in this video. I'm basically going to talk about my wildcard draft for Gaming 34, if I was using one this week, and how I would manage this game week, and also the rest of the game weeks for the rest of the season, basically, as well. Uh, if you're wildcarding Game Week 34, I don't know exactly why you would do that. I think Game Week 30, 35 is a better game week to wildcard in myself, because that's when I'm going to wildcard, uh, personally. But if you really have a really bad team now, you don't have enough double game week players now, and uh, your team isn't re really looking that good for game week 37 either, maybe you don't have a free hit, for example, then maybe wildcard is the best option for you, and then maybe that is the game week, uh, this is the game week that you should use it. And if you're using it this game week, you have to keep in mind that you can't basically have two different teams. That's what most of us other people are doing. I'm dead ending into game week 34 and then wildcarding out of that team in game week 35 to have as many doubles as I can for game week 34 and then have a completely new team for Game Week 37 with several other double double Game Week players. But with this tactic, if you're walking in Game Week 34, you basically have to just pick the best out of the two Game Weeks. You have to pick the best double Game Week players from Game Week 34 and then combine that with some of the best double Game Week players from Game Week 37. And that's basically what this draft is going to be, as you will see as I go along with this video. So number one pick is always Cole Palmer. He's just the main man in any draft, basically. He doubles in two Game Weeks as well. Double, double Game Week 35, Double Game Week 37 for both Chelsea and Spurs. So we're going to load up on especially Chelsea because they have de decent matches apart from the doubles as well. Cole Palmer, number one pick, easy. You just saw him score, what, four, three goals, have one assist. Was it even four goals? I can't even remember. He's just, he scores so many goals and uh, he's on penalties. He's super good in general. Probably the player of the season at this point. FPL player of the season by far. Probably the best FPL value player of all time as well. He's already ahead of 200 points and he has so many matches to go. 208 points. He actually has the most points in the whole game so far, even though he didn't play for like the first four or five game weeks. So Palmer is just the easiest number one pick in the whole world. Like if you don't have him already, <laughs> yeah, you have to give up, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, Palmer is it's just a definite number one pick for everyone always this season basically and i wonder what his price is going to be next uh, next season so if you have any predictions for his price next season please tell me down below in your comments what in the comments what you think for his price i think personally it should be around 10 million at least because yeah he's just been absolutely amazing and for like 8.5 i've seen some some people will suggest everyone would have him at that price what will you be able to or what we will, 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 will what would you be willing to pay for him this season um, if you had to, for me, I'd probably pay, yeah, the the highest that you can can almost this season because he's been in such fine form. So he should definitely be ten million or or more, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, besides the point. But he's number one pick forever and always this season, at least. Cole Palmer. Number two, we have Alexander Isak, another player who's in terrific form. He's just a fantastic player overall. Now he's been fit for a long while. No Callum Wilson in sight as well. Really good matches. He doesn't have a double game week coming up now, but he has really good matches. Away to Crystal Palace this upcoming game week. Sheffield United at home in game week 35. Burnley away game week 36. And then double game week 37 against Brighton at home and Man United away. They're really, really good fixtures across the board. Man United are conceding for fun now as well. Brighton is a really bad team. They're not really doing much uh, this season at all, especially later on in the season now. So Isaac has just tremendous fixtures. He's still a decent price. And he's in terrific form especially at home as you'll see you have those two home fixtures but Isak is just absolutely amazing should be in most teams I wish I had him in my own team but I'm going to walk out him in in game week 35 even though that's going to be a bit late but, but yeah I really wish I brought him in in game week 31 rather than Darwin but here we are um, yeah if you haven't gotten him already this is your point to, to get him I guess maybe not this week if you're just doing a single transfer because he's he has like just a single game week away from home as well but gaming 35 onwards he should be a priority for you to get into your team so uh, but if you're on a wall card get him in straight away because he's my number two pick because he's just fantastic fantastic player fantastic form fantastic fixtures everything you need from an FPL player basically number three we have Phil Foden who's still another really really good player he didn't play this last game week he didn't even come on either so a lot of people got in the likes of uh, Anthony Gordon who I'm going to talk about pretty soon because he's in this draft as well um, other people got in Garnacho with the, his four points so Foden has actually been pretty good in the way that he's 
he either plays and starts and plays 90 minutes or he doesn't play at all and plays zero minutes and you get a substitute in and this season when you have so much value in our squads it's going to be a pretty good substitute on your bench so that's the perfect player basically to have so when Foden is rested he doesn't come on at all and that doesn't block your bench players from coming in as well so Foden is just terrific from that aspect as well but I do think he's going to play most matches going forward it remains to be seen what happens in the Champions League I'm recording this before the Man City uh, Real Madrid game if they get knocked out there and they have only the league to play for, I would expect Foden to play pretty much every single match. But there could be some rotation risk now with both the FA Cup and the Champions League as well going on on top of the Premier League. So there's a slight rotation risk there with Foden, but like I said, he usually plays zero minutes when he doesn't start. So that's also not really that big of an issue with Foden. And he's just a terrific player. He's shown that in every single competition this season that he is a fantastic player. He's taken that another step up this season and is another contender for player of the season next to Palmer. Uh, so, so yeah, I think he's a pretty important player to have in the squad. If you're walking right now, or if you just transferring players in now, again, he doesn't have a double game again 34, so maybe not the immediate transfer plans for you if you're not on a wall card. But if you're on a wall card, I think he should definitely be in your plans uh, from now until the end of the season, basically. So he comes in on number three. Number four, Anthony Gordon, I did mention him, and he's also, like Isak, in terrific form. He's even more home-dependent than Isak, though, so he's not quite as good as Isak, I think. Uh, and Isak is also the striker who is on penalties, so he has slightly more advantages compared to Gordon. I think he's just a better overall player. But Gordon, in his own right, has been absolutely terrific, especially at home. He just keeps getting loads and loads and loads of points at home. I think even in that away game against Burnley, he could get some points, but his only points away from the season basically was away to Sheffield United when he got 12 points. But that could happen against Burnley as well, because they are just as bad as Sheffield United, so that's also another great fixture for Gordon. So Gordon, fantastic fixtures, especially at home. Really someone you can rely on, and Newcastle are really firing on all cylinders currently, beating Spurs 4-0 this past game, so... Newcastle players seem like the premium things to have, especially if you are not um, solely focused on Game 34 and the double that's coming up in Game 34, but also what happens after that in Game 35, 36, 37, and 38, where Newcastle have really good fixtures. So Gordon comes in with number four. I think it's a pretty easy pick as well. Uh, he's a new player from last time. As you can see, he's marked in green, and that means that he wasn't in the squad last time around, but uh, I admit a mistake on that one because he had a pretty good home fixture against Spurs because Spurs are really there for the taking now, so probably should have had him earlier, but better uh, late than never, I guess. But I still haven't had him this season myself, and I really wish I had. I'm probably going to get him back on or get him in for Gaming 35 when I'm doing my own wildcard for next game weeks uh, or next uh, week of wildcard drafts video, basically, in a week from now. Uh, but yeah, Gordon, fantastic player. He comes in at number four, and, uh, and yeah, gives you the double, double up with the Newcastle attackers, which I think is going to be really good for the future, as we saw this past game week, basically. Number five, Eiling Holland. I think he's still a really good player. He's a bit more expensive, but again, price isn't really that big of an issue this season. You have almost unlimited cash this season, so uh, the money that is spent on Holland shouldn't really be that big of a problem for you. Has pretty good matches. He is a pretty safe player to have. He gets penalties, as we saw this past game week, where Doku got a penalty for Man City and gave Holland and everyone that captained him a pretty good score. Um, so he's always going to be a decent captain's option, but you're obviously going to, we're going to want to have double gaming players rather than him, so maybe it's just that Wolverhampton at home fixture where you double him, uh, or where you captain him, apart from the double game week in 37, where he's probably also the best captain's option, but maybe Palmer is better captain's option that game week as well, because Palmer's just been the best captain's option for the past like five game weeks. So, uh, but yeah, Holland still, fantastic player. He's super highly owned, obviously. Pretty much everyone has him already. Uh, and for good reason, because he can score a lot of goals, and City are just firing on all cylinders, being really, really good currently, especially in the league. Seems like they're going to shore up the league now with two point, uh, points ahead of both Liverpool and Arsenal. Probably going to win the rest of the games this season, and they always seem to win 3-1, 4-1, 5-1 type of, uh, type of uh, results. So loading up on attackers from City seems like a really good idea at this point, and Holland is basically the main attacker at City, even though Foden has been even better this season, and also cheaper so hold on not quite as essential as Foden but he's still a pretty damn good player to have so he comes in at number five number six we have Matthias Cunha another striker and a pretty cheap one at that he has a pretty good game week now in uh, double game week 34 Arsenal at home Arsenal is not the best fixture it's tough to score against them but as we saw at Aston Villa they can score um, also against Arsenal even though they have the best defense in the league but Bournemouth at home is a really good fixture Luton at home in uh, game week 35 is really good and Game Week 37, even though it's not a double game week, which is not really that big of a worry for you if you're wallcarding now, because you're not going to have 11 wallcard or 11 double game week players in Game Week 37, or even more than that. 
uh, is still just a really solid game, whether you're bench boosting in 37 or you're not bench boosting in 37. I think Kunia is going to be a good player for you that game week as well. So Kunia has three really good game weeks in the next four. Man City away, you can obviously bench him in game week 36. Uh, and he's just a really cheap and really good player who I also should have had in the week locker draft last week because he scored two goals, obviously, this past game week. Um, it was only a matter of time before he was going to start again, Kunia, and now that he's starting again, he's, again, scoring and scoring and scoring because he's been a really underrated, really good asset this season in FPL, uh, who I wish I had more of this season. But the injury problems was kind of a bummer when it comes to Kunia because he had a lot of good games in that span. But now that he's back, he's going to be another terrific option to have in FPL. So he comes in at number six as well. Number seven, we have Mohamed Salah still. We basically have him for this game week, the double game week against Fulham away and Everton away. I think he's still the best captain's option, but you could go other places. You could go with other players for that game week, but I still think Salah is the best captain's option. Um, and for that reason, I think he should be in the squad. And like I said, you have more than enough money in the bank basically to, to be able to afford both Salah and Holland and another premium midfielder that we're going to talk about pretty soon. But um, but yeah, with the likes of Palmer and stuff, uh, just being cheap players that you can have as well. And Kunya, uh, you can afford Salah and Holland and those guys. But Salah, really good dual game week. He hasn't been the best lately, but at the same time, he's gotten really huge chances. He's created a lot of huge chances as well. Got an assist chalked off for an offside um, a couple game weeks ago as well. So still waiting for Salah to explode. I have captained him basically all of the game weeks, the past three or four game weeks, and I should have gone with Palmer instead, but Salah could still be the best captain's option this game week, especially with Palmer playing away to Arsenal and Salah having a double game week. Um, I still think he's the best captain's option, even though he's let me down basically the last few game weeks as the captain, but for at some point he's going to deliver. And two games against Fulham away and Everton away, I think that's pretty good uh, chances for Salah, who's just a really good player in general who's on penalties as well and can assist uh, goals uh, on top of that so he comes in at number seven our first defender is actually going to be Aitnori still he is a slight injury concern maybe so there is some doubt about him playing the next game but it's against Arsenal anyway so I don't really expect too much from that game uh, hopefully we can get some appearance points from him in that game maybe get an assist or cheeky goal which he tends to do sometimes because he's just really really attacking and for that reason I still think he's the best defender to have in the game but Wolves, they don't really have the best fixtures in terms of um, after Game Week 34 either. They do have Luton at home, which is really good, like I mentioned with Kunya. Uh, and Eichner is really cheap and really attacking, so that's really why he's in the squad, basically. Because, yeah, he can get you points in any game, basically. Because he can get assists, he can get goals, he can potentially get clean sheets, even though we haven't seen that much of that from Wolverhampton uh, this season. But he's just so attacking, and whether he's playing as a left wing back or as like a left winger or second striker even, as he, as he has done a couple of game weeks... He's just terrific value, who's been a really, really good player for me and a really good asset for me in FPL the last few game weeks. So Aitnuri still, depending on his injury issues, I think he's going to be fully fit to play next game week because he was out this past game week in game 33, obviously. I think he's going to be back, though, for game week 34, and that means that he's going to be a really good option immediately. So, so yeah, Aitnuri comes in at number eight. Number nine, we have Gabriel Magalash from Arsenal still. I still think Arsenal defense is really worth having because they are really good defensively. Saw them even against Aston Villa. They did keep the clean sheet until the 83rd minute when they conceded their first goal. I think also if they had taken the lead earlier, I think they would have been able to keep the clean sheet as well. So Arsenal, still really good defense. Gabriel, still really good value, obviously, as a player that can get forward on corners and set pieces, especially and score goals. He's one of my favorite players in FPL, and I've said that several times this season and uh, he's still a really good player who's going to play most if not every game for Arsenal especially now that they need all the points they can get they need to win out basically to beat City it seems like uh, so I still think Gabriel is a really good option even though they only have one double game week now in 34 and then they don't have any other double game weeks after that and they have some tough fixtures but still it's Arsenal if I would uh, set my faith into one defense to keep a clean sheet regardless of the matchup it would be Arsenal and Gabriel is also the best player on uh, set pieces as well when it comes to defenders in this league. So, so yeah, Gabriel comes in at number nine for that reason. Number 10, we have Dan Byrne, a new player from Newcastle. And uh, I just really like Newcastle's fixtures. Like I mentioned with Gordon and Isak, so I feel like having a defender from Newcastle will make sense as well. Uh, if I had more money in the bank for this draft, I probably would go with Fabian Schar because he has really good goal potential as well. He's shown that in several games. He's a really good player in general. Good bonus potential as well, but Byrne is not that much worse as well for a lower price he's on he's about a million less than uh, than Fabian Schar so if you can afford Fabian Schar I, I would go with him rather than burn uh, with this draft but to give enough money for you to have the likes of Salah and Son and those guys probably have burn but burn is also a nice um, guy to have 
in the meantime, as we wait, I wait Trippier getting back into full fitness. So you can, for example, have Salah now and Burn now, and then eventually in like two, one or two game weeks, you can potentially downgrade Salah to someone like Kevin De Bruyne, for example, and upgrade Burn to Trippier if you have enough money in the bank to do that as well. Trippier might be even better than Shar, or you might just get Shar in before Burn as well eventually. But even if you have to keep Burn, or even if you double up on him, if for some reason Gordon gets injured or something, and you need, uh, and you have another space for Newcastle players. Uh, Burn is still going to be really nice for you for the end of the season as well. He's going to play every game basically as a centre back, it seems like, because he does just have so many injury problems with Lascelles out with an injury, Botman out with an injury. It seems like Burn is going to be nailed on to play every single game. So for 4.5, I think he's a really, really good asset, and having triple Newcastle seems like a really good idea, especially if you're Walker in this week and you can't really have. Uh, two separate double game week teams for gaming 34 and gaming 37. Dan Burn is going to be a really nice medium option there with both really good matches and a double game week game 37 on top of that as well. So Dan Burn comes in at number 10 for that reason. Number 11, we have Hung Min Son. And yes, there is a lack of Spurs players in this squad. Son is actually the only Spurs player that I have. And that's kind of interesting considering that they have two double game weeks coming up at some point. But it's just that the fixtures are just not that good. Arsenal at home, Liverpool away, City at home. Do they really have more fixtures? Like, they do actually factually have more fixtures than everyone else uh, those game weeks. They also do blank in Game 34, which you should take into account because you need players for Game 34, obviously. Um, but even beyond that, even if you're a walker in Game 35, yes, they have more fixtures, but they are really bad fixtures. So, I don't know, especially how Spurs are looking now. They're not looking that good. So, I don't know. The Spurs defense is not something you can rely on, basically. And offensively, there's just too many good players to have several Spurs players, I feel like. So, can't really fit in most Spurs assets. But Son is the one exception that I have, because I think Son is just an absolutely fantastic player. Even though he hasn't showed it lately, he has actually had some pretty good fixtures on paper, but hasn't really provided any goods, because Spurs have just been really, really bad lately. Seems like they're really struggling with their form. Maybe Ange Postecoglou is getting found out a bit in the league. I don't know. Uh, but Son should still be a good asset. He's still on penalties. He's still a really, really good player, as we know. He doesn't need many chances to score. So I still think he's a really good player to have. And especially for game 37 and game 38, Spurs have really good fixtures. Uh, Burnley at home. City at home is not the best fixture. But at the same time, Spurs have scored against City at home several times. And Son has been pretty good in those fixtures as well. And then game 37, 38, they face Sheffield United away as well, which is probably the best week or the best uh, the best captain's option that week captain's option that week is son so i still think son is really worth it when it comes to spurs players apart from that you can go with someone like adogi you can have vicario and goal because goalkeepers are really tough to choose as well you could have someone like madison but he's been really bad lately maybe richarlison comes back and looks good maybe Brandon johnson you want to take a punt on him but i don't know i just don't feel like, like spurs are that good lately so i think son is basically the only one that you need for now and then you could potentially look to bring in more spurs players for game 37 which is uh, basically their good game week so i think game week 34 is obviously terrible with just blank fixture you didn't have any fixtures in, in game week 34 double game week 35 isn't looking too good arsenal home chelsea away they did get 2-2 against arsenal last time around um but but still it's still a tough fixture against a really good team in arsenal who need all the points that they can get so chelsea away could be a good fixture but at the same time i don't know not the best fixture so i think Son is the only spurs player worth having and i don't think it's a rush to bring him in either because i don't think he's going to be the best captain switching in game 35 i think palmer is by far a better option there considering his form and he's playing aston villa and spurs two pretty weak defenses um gaming 36 as you can see is not good for son either liverpool away is really tough and then giving 37 is obviously where he could shine but again even there i think holland is the better captaincy choice uh, there potentially even isaac so yeah, Son is by no means necessary to have uh, in FL currently, but he's still a really, really good player who can turn it on in any second. So, so yeah, he comes in at number 11. That was a pretty long-winded answer on Son, but just my thoughts about Spurs players in general and why I'm not so hot on them. And I think Son is the only one worth having currently, at least. Number 12, we have uh, Jared Branthwaite from Everton. As you can see from the fixtures, <laughs> every single uh, game week they have a really, really nice fixture. Nottingham Forest at home, Bradford at home, Luton away, Sheffield United at home. Really, really nice. On top of that, they have a double game week in 34 with Liverpool at home as well. That's not the best fixture, obviously. And they could concede six goals like they did against Chelsea and get minus points. That could happen. But at the same time, we've also seen teams like Man United keeping in 0-0 against Liverpool. We've seen Everton do that in the past. I think that they did that last season or even this season, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, so you could get some clean sheet points there as well from Branthwaite, but I just think he's a really good value player, really, really cheap, obviously, and has those really, really good fixtures. So for that reason, I think he should be in your squad. 
Number 12, he's usually by the end of the weekly walk or draft series or the weekly walk or draft videos, he's usually included right at the end there because I quite like him. He's not necessary to have because he's obviously a cheap enabler, basically, but he's also just, like I said, a cheap enabler, someone who's really nice to have uh, in your squad. So he comes in at number 12, and that's basically what he's done the whole season because, yeah, he's a really good player, and he has some goal threat as well. He showed that last game. He was pretty close to scoring against Chelsea, even though they lost by a lot in that game. And didn't look good defensively but we also know against the weaker teams everton can turn it on and have a lot of clean sheets this season and seeing their fixtures they just have a lot of weak teams to play so i think brantford is still really really good value um he's even cheaper than mikolenko and, and those guys as well so brantford comes in at number 12 for that reason number 13 we have our first goalkeeper and it's going to be uh, henderson from uh crystal palace i almost said jordan henderson there but it's dean henderson uh, Crystal Palace are looking better now. Ulisa and Eze are playing at the same time, which is always really good for Crystal Palace, not only offensively, but also they're going to be more in control of every match and be able to keep clean sheets, as we saw against Liverpool. That was pretty lucky, though, because Liverpool had, like, five mega chances that they missed. Uh, so, obviously, you can't really expect that from every game for Crystal Palace, but they also have much easier fixtures now coming up. Double game week against West Ham and Newcastle. Again, not the best teams to play against. West Ham, maybe, because West Ham are struggling and are also playing in... Uh, in Europa League now on Thursday, so that's going to be a tough game for them. But, but yeah, I think Henderson is just a really nice player to have in general for the foreseeable future because Crystal Palace are looking pretty good, especially if they can keep all their players healthy. And I don't really see that many other goalkeepers that are worth their money, and especially with this team where I basically needed to save some money because I have Salah, I have Sona, I have Holan, I have really expensive players. Someone like Henderson who's not too pricey and has a double game week and has decent fixtures beyond that as well. Fits nicely, I think. So he comes in at number 13. Number 14, we have Gusto in defense. I'm still not 100% sold on Gusto as a long-term pick either because I think Reese James is going to be back at some point. That's going to mess up with the minutes for Gusto at least if they try to get James to play some matches and have some minutes. Um, Chelsea as well, just keep uh, conceding. They didn't do that against Everton, but they probably should have because <laughs> Everton had several chances, had pretty high XG in that game. Uh, so Chelsea defense isn't the best, and Gusto is also someone who is potentially rotation prone. He's also struggled a bit with injuries lately, so he's been a bit um, in and out. He's also Gilchrist, his uh, replacement in this past game, score, so maybe he gets a chance going forward because Chelsea don't really have much to play for in the league. The kid still gets sixth, I guess, but they're also fighting for uh, the FA Cup as well. So yeah, not 100% so long, Gusto, but I still have him in my own team, and I'm still going to keep him most likely just because he... At his best, I think he can be really, really good. He has attacking upside. He is uh, join. He is joining the team offensively. He's close to getting assists here and there. Goals not so much, but he's still also someone that could end up in the box sometimes. Not quite as attacking as uh, Spurs defenders, but he's still a pretty attacking player. And Chelsea, as we saw against Everton, can keep clean sheets as well from time to time, and they have those double game week fixtures: double game week thirty-five, double game week thirty-seven, uh, West Ham at home in game week thirty-six. Looking pretty good in terms of fixtures, so we just want to have as many Chelsea players as possible because they have more doubles than everyone else, and they also have not the worst fixtures as well. They have better fixtures than Spurs at least, so I am more confident in Chelsea players, but I'm still not 100% sold on their defensive players especially. But there is another Chelsea player that is obviously not in this, um, and who's someone that could be a really popular pick, and that is Nicholas Jackson. And the reason that he's not in this squad is the fact that he has nine yellow cards. So if he gets another yellow card in either of the next two games, he's going to get a two-match suspension, and that's not something we want in FPL. So he's probably someone that I'm looking to bring in for game week 35, when they do have a double game week uh, as well. So he needs to survive one more game week, I think, um, or one or two more games, I don't know. Uh, but he's someone that I'm looking at more for game week 35 rather than uh, the immediate future because of that uh, suspension threat, basically. Uh, but Gusto doesn't have that suspension threat, and he's a pretty good player to have, so he comes in at number 14. Number 15 is also a Chelsea player. It is Petrovic, the goalkeeper from Chelsea, and like I said, they don't really keep many clean sheets. Uh, but I don't really see any other goalkeepers that are really worth it either. David Raya would be a nice option. I think, like I said with Gabriel, I think Arsenal will keep some clean sheets towards the end of the season because they really need to. They need to win every game, and they're dominating most games and don't really let in that many chances. But again, Ryan doesn't really get that many saves either, so I think Petrovic has a higher ceiling for that reason too. Um, but yeah, Petrovic is basically there for the double game weeks. Uh, he can fit in those game weeks and have Henderson. You basically have a double game week player uh, in goal for three out of the next four game weeks. Uh, and the final game week, you play West Ham at home, and West Ham have a pretty terrible offensive, uh, yeah, pr pretty terrible offensive data as well lately. Uh, just a terrible team in general, West Ham, my own favorite team. 
Uh, but yeah, Patrick comes in at number 15 for that reason. Don't really see any other goalkeeper staff, but again, number 15 pick means that he is uh, the player that I'm the least sure of in the squad. Because, yeah, he hasn't really returned that many points lately. And he's also a slight rotation threat, potentially. If he makes another massive mistake, I think maybe Robert Sanchez, Robert Sanchez gets into a goal for Chelsea. And it also takes up a Chelsea spot where you potentially want to have Nicholas Jackson. So maybe don't go with Petrovic, actually, uh, saying that. Because maybe you want to save that third Chelsea spot for Nicholas Jackson for next game week. So, so yeah. But anyway, he's a decent goalkeeper with uh, double game week uh, fixtures. So that's why he's in the squad, at least. As you can see, Henderson, Petrovic, Byrne, Gordon, Salah, and Cunha. Six players are marked with green, and that means that six players have dropped out of the team because those six green players are new players. And that means six players have dropped out, so let's take a look at those guys before we wrap up this video. So yeah, um, six players that are marked in red, as you can see above me there. The first player, number seven last week, was Garnacho. He had to be subbed off this past game week. Don't, not sure if it was injury related or if it was just Ten Hag not liking what he saw from Garnacho, but he was subbed off at the half. Garnacho liked some posts about Ten Hag uh, missing the point and stuff. I don't really trust Man United that much, so Garnacho drops out, and that's also the reason why Hoyland drops out at number 15. I don't know why I picked Hoyland rather than Cunha last, last game week. Massive mistake for me, so both the Man United guys drop out because I just don't really trust Man United going forward either. Kevin De Bruyne drops out, which is kind of harsh because he had really good underlying stats. Really should have had a lot of points last game week, but he still ended up with two points. But it's basically just to make room for all the other midfielders that I needed in the squad. Gordon comes in because um, he's been terrific lately. Salah for this one game week, but you could definitely have Salah for this one game week in game week 34 and then sell him for De Bruyne in game week 35. You do have that final city spot open. You could also get someone like Guardiola, for example, who got 12 points this past game week and lo is looking pretty good. So... You have a lot of options there, but De Bruyne drops out for that reason. Just needed to fit in all the other midfielders, basically. But next game week, game week 35, you could definitely do Salah to De Bruyne and have that triple up in the Man City attack, which is going to be pretty good going forward, I think. De Bruyne dropped out in goal, basically just for money, cost-cutting reasons. Needed to uh, cut some costs there with Salah getting into the side again. That's so Raya was dropped for that reason, but like I said with Petrovic, if you do have the money, um, I think I prefer Pet uh, Raya quite a lot more than Petrovic, so I would probably do that if I had the, the extra money available, which you might have, actually. Petroporo, the same thing, sort of. Spurs, again, looking bad defensively. Petroporo was subbed off pretty early this past game as well, so uh, I think it was an injury, if I'm not mistaken, so he's also a bit of a, an unsure player. Udogi has obviously been one of my favorite players as well, but... I don't know, I just feel like Byrne is a better pick at this point, and I think the other defenders as well deserve to have a spot in the team. Don't really see uh, who I would drop. Maybe Gusto, who's number 14th pick, maybe. But, but yeah, like I said, Chelsea just have better fixtures than Spurs, and Gusto is not quite as attacking as Adogi, but he's not far off it either. So, so yeah, uh, I'd rather have Gusto than any other Spurs fullback at this current time, considering the fixtures that Spurs have, which are not that good. Pick for number 13, easily could have had him rather than Petrovic as well, but again... Doubling up on Chelsea on Everton defense, maybe not the best idea, but I don't know. Pickford is still a decent pick, so he's another alternative to Petrovic if you don't want to have Petrovic. I probably should have changed that before I did this video, but whatever. Um, probably nicer to have that extra Chelsea spot open for Nicholas Jackson if he survives the suspension, like I mentioned. But yeah, uh, Pickford, someone that could easily have in, in goal, but again, doubling up on the Everton defense after they just conceded six goals against Chelsea. Kind of just felt wrong, so I felt like I had to drop Pickford. And Hoyle and I talked about... Uh, don't really trust him that much anymore. Don't really trust Man United uh, that much. I think there are better options. Uh, like we have Acuna, so Hoyland drops out as well from the team. And that's basically it for the weekly local draft this uh, week. This is going to be only on the only video that I'm going to record here in London as well. I'm going to be back. Uh, only going to do two two videos this week, just because I don't really have the capabilities to record too much. Kevin is already asleep, uh, so I'm doing this um, pretty late. It's uh, 3 a.m. here in, in the UK, so um, <laughs> either way. Uh, this is basically the only video I'm going to do in London, but I'm going to be back in Norway for Friday. So I'm going to do my big team selection video where I'm going to talk about my team, my team plans, or like my team for gaming 33, my team plans for gaming 34 without a free hit. Also going to make a free hit draft like I do every single week on the team selection video. Uh, and it will be nice to compare my free hit drafts compared to uh, what I actually have in my own team. And I'm also going to talk about the manager of the week this week who had Palmer as captain. Spoilers, because Palmer was amazing this past game week. Uh, so I'm going to do all of that on Friday when I return back to Norway, when I'm going to have my lighting back, my uh, own microphone. This is Kevin's microphone, which is the same as mine, but it's, uh, but yeah. And also going to have um, my camera back as well, which is the most important thing, because, uh, yeah, I'm not looking so good in this video with the uh, bad camera, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> that's beside the point. 
But if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed already, please press that subscribe button. It would be nice to get closer to 1,000 subscribers and try to grow this channel even more. A lot of people have commented down below that this is uh, the, one of the most underrated uh, FPL type of content uh, YouTube channels, if you will. Uh, <laughs> I say that, stumbling with my words as I say that. Um, so yeah, if you feel the same way, uh, please like the video, subscribe and stuff if you haven't already. Uh, it would be really greatly appreciated for me. Or even even better, comment down below if, you have, if I've helped you at all this season. It would be really nice to hear from you. Uh, always nice to hear from anyone that's watching my content and, uh, and hearing if I'm helping them or not. So yeah, uh, if you comment down below as well, that's also really appreciated. But with that, I'm going to leave you. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, it's been half an hour of a nice talk with a bad camera and stuff. But either way, I'll see you back again on Friday when I'll be in... Uh, better condition in terms of my uh, interest of the time that i'm recording because i'm going to record uh, in the middle of the day rather than at the middle of the night and i'm also going to have more equipment and uh, more thoughts to uh, share with you basically so that's it basically for this video thank you for watching bye bye